Learning is one of the things where we all wish we could do instantly, like compacting years of knowledge into a microchip that we can insert in the back of our brains. But in reality, this isn't the case. For most of us, including me, we struggle to learn everything that we want to. Especially with the internet, we have so many different resources. We have online courses regarding mach from machine learning to how to ride horses. There are so many things that we can learn and life isn't long enough for us to try everything we want. But life is just long enough to allow us to narrow down our focus, to, to learn a few things very well. And a great example of this is Elon Musk, who has built companies like Tesla and SpaceX and SolarCity from SpaceX, which builds rockets, to Tesla, which builds cars with renewable energy. Musk is able to create multi-billion dollar companies and learn different aspects of different industries in a matter of years. Now, while most of us can't achieve his level of intellect, we can at least try to incorporate some of his methods so that we can improve our knowledge, whether it be for school or for work. Now the first rule that Elon Musk uses is to build off a good foundation. And in a Reddit post, he talks about how um, it is important to view knowledge as sort of a semantic tree. Make sure you understand the fundamental principles, i.e. the trunk and big branches, before you get into the leaves, details, or there is nothing for them to hang on to. In other words, we want to break down complex topics into fundamental principles and master those before getting into the smaller details. So last year, I had a friend in my math class who was very smart. He has a very logical mindset, which one would think is good for math. But the problem is he had a weak understanding of algebra. He spent too long trying to rearrange equations, solve, trying to factor them, trying to substitute variables that he didn't have time to focus on the more complex topics. Now, if you were to think of math as one big tree of knowledge, algebra would be the trunk, the, the base of all that. And you could imagine calculus and trigonometry being the branches that come out of the trunk. Now, if your trunk isn't big enough and it's too weak, the branches will probably fall off. I know from my own experience and other people that we tend to jump right into the nitty gritty, the, the complex details before we master the, the, ba the fundamental principles because it's more fun. It, it's boring to try and just go over a, a boring principle rather than trying to find something new out there. And it might not even be our fault. Uh, for example, students transitioning from middle school to high school, some of them and if we're talking about a Spanish class here, some of them may have weak understandings of Spanish conjugations, how to conjugate verbs. Now, when the schools place these kids into high Spanish level courses or just Spanish courses in general, what you find is that the teachers expect the students to know all the concepts already. So what they do is they just cram as much information as they can before a test or before an upcoming assignment. and it's just not sustainable and it's a not it's not a good way to learn even though the students might fall behind in the class they might not do the work by them for themselves students might not realize that the spanish conjugations are what is slowing them down and they might not be motivated to do this by themselves they could be lazy they could forget about it or they just might not have time as a result a lot of students are just left behind and their learning becomes inefficient if you relate to this, you're not the only one, and I've definitely felt this as well. But there are also a lot of different solutions to this problem. One of the solutions is if your school provides it, go to extra help sessions that are hosted by your teachers. Make sure you ask teachers the questions about the gaps in your knowledge and ask for extra practice problems to, to help boost your foundation. Not only will you understand the content better, but your teacher will also take note of this and in class or outside of class, uh, he or she will know what to do when you're struggling or will, will, can help you in class if you're, if you're not getting something. Another solution is to just go by yourself and search up, search up worksheets or practice problems for the specific subject that you're doing. For example, if you're doing math and you're focusing, focusing on algebra, there are tons of different worksheets on that. And you can pick and choose which one has answers if you want to check them or not, or difficult problems. The, tr the, the, the truth is, most of the fundamentals comes from 
diligent practice. Spend some time every day from like 10 to 30 minutes just completing one worksheet and checking your answers. Trust me, you're growing your results exponentially and in a few years or even a few months, you'll see how you're able to go p get past all the, the basic stuff and focus on the new concepts that you're supposed to learn. All in all, building the foundation takes up a lot of time and can be very frustrating, but in the end, if you don't do this, you won't be able to learn new concepts or internalize the different theories that you come across. And the second rule is to connect concepts from different disciplines. Continuing on with our tree analogy, if you build a strong enough base, you can start to branch out and connect those different branches with different trees. And in case that was too abstract for you, you basically need to connect ideas between different subjects. Everything Elon Musk learns, he connects back to the main principle or the core idea of his subject. And through that, he's able to weave and find different connections between physics and math or physics and chemistry to allow him to branch from building rockets to building cars to, to making renewable energy power, whatever, whatever it is. This is how Musk learns different industries seemingly overnight. Well, now you might be asking, well, how does a lowly person like me do that? And I'm gonna tell you the truth, it's not easy. You have to be aware of the different subjects you're learning and internalize those concepts before you can go on to connecting different ideas. Take school, for example. So you have different subjects from math to history to science and bet all, between those subjects, there's bound to be a connection that you can form as long as you keep your mind open and attentive. So specifically for me, I have a hard time with English and history. And I think that's because I'm more of a math person. But when I first started off high school, I blocked my mind. I just completely closed off my brain from accepting new knowledge from English or history. But as the weeks progressed and the school year got difficult, I, I was forced to understand the English reading, understand what was going on in history. And through that, I formed a connection. So for me, I discovered the connection of religion in history, the, how, how this religion came about, what people were doing during this religion. And I related that to the books that I, were re I was reading in English. How, how did religion affect the setting? How did the religion affect the author who's writing the book? It was a huge turning point for me because I realized the importance of keeping your mind open to new ideas. And I'm sure some of you really hate that particular subject, really hate math, really hate science, but I can assure you that it's only gonna make it worse. Closing your mind off to one subject will only make it harder to form connections and to try and learn that subject and all the other subjects that you have to learn in high school. Instead of closing your mind off, look for clues. What is the big idea? What is the teacher trying to tell me by teaching me this specific example or specific concept? And how can this be similar to the other things I'm learning? Are the big ideas overlapping? When you do find a connection, write it down because not only does it strengthen your understanding between the two subjects, but it also gives you an idea of where that piece of information fits into the context of the bigger world or the world that you're eventually gonna have to go into. Now, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope this video about Elon Musk helped you become a better learner. If you found it interesting, please consider liking or commenting down below and hit that subscribe button. All right, thank you and I'll see you in the next video.